Hello everyone, welcome to the next lab of EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. So in this lab, we are discussing about how to configure the uh, DMA in the scatter gather mode. So in the previous lecture uh, video, we discussed about the uh, how uh, the difference between the simple mode of the DMA and scatter gather mode. And we also discussed the register map of the uh, scatter gather mode DMA. We also discussed the process of configuring the DMA in the scatter gathered mode. Now, the next important thing in the DMA is the buffer descriptor. As discussed before, the buffer descriptor will inform the DMA, will tell the DMA about the uh, what are the properties of the corresponding transfer. For example, there will be separate buffer descriptor for MM2S and separate buffer descriptor for S2MM. In case of the MM2S, the buffer descriptor will tell us about the what is the starting address? It will also tell us about the length of the data to be transferred and um, starting address length of the data to be transferred. Then it will also tell the pointer to the uh, next buffer descriptor because the DMA should be able to move to the next buffer descriptor. Uh, it also tells about the uh, status of the buffer descriptor, whether the buffer descriptor is in the free state, uh, pre-processed state or the hardware state or the post-processed state. Whatever the status is there, the, uh, it will be uh, informed uh, to us. And uh, uh, yeah, so these are the information. Also the address, starting address, length pointer, and the status register. And the same case here, it is also starting address. The same information is present in the S2MM buffer descriptor as well. So by reading the buffer descriptor, uh, the, uh, the DMA will know what kind of transfer and what is the size of the transfer the DMA needs to perform. Also the uh, buffer descriptor will be stored in the memory. It can be in the block RAM, URAM or the any DDR memory. And uh, by using the DMA register, the application have uh, already informed the DMA where the buffer descriptors are stored. Okay, so you can see that the buffer descriptors is nothing but the bunch of data. So in our case, we can say that each buffer descriptor is around, uh, 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 each uh, buffer descriptor is around 16, 32 bits of data. Okay, so each buffer descriptor. So if you have multiple buffer descriptor, you will have the chunk of 16, 32 bits data. So AXI DMA operation requires some memory resident data structure, that is buffer descriptor, that holds the list of the DMA operation to be performed. DMA reads the buffer descriptor to know source, destination, data location, and amount of data to be transferred. Each buffer descriptor consists of the some 32-bit number of words, like in our case, we can say that the up to 16 32-bit words. Uh, we need to create this buffer descriptor in the application because our application de determines where the data is stored, from where it sh should be taken up, and where it should be processed data to be stored. And we need to store them in a memory. We just need to tell the first buffer descriptor address and the last buffer descriptor address to the DMA in their current descriptor and the tell descriptor uh, region of the DMA. So this is a link list based approach where the each buffer descriptor will point to the next buffer descriptor we process. You can uh, have the multiple, uh, uh, you can uh, have the multiple buffer descriptor and each buffer descriptor uh, can process certain amount of data. When you have the large packet, you can, or you have the non contagious memory, you can have the uh, one packet span across the multiple buffer descriptor. And if you want to maintain the synchronization between the start of the packet and end of the packet, you can use the uh, corresponding start of the frame and the end of the frame flag. Now, each buffer descriptor has the corresponding. Now, each DMA, when you configure the DMA, it has this width of the buffer length register. And this width determine the how much amount of data can be transferred in a using the single buffer descriptor. So in the current uh, AXI DMA, the maximum length is 26. So the total data transfer using the uh, single buffer descriptor is two to the power 26 that corresponds to this number, okay? But by using the AXI DMA IP in the view order, you can configure this value to any value less than this. For example, when you use the multi-channel DMA, this value is limited to the 23. So you need to be carefully about this. one. And it is important that the, there are separate buffer descriptor for the MM2S and S2M. 
Now, as I told you that the buffer descriptor are nothing but the information for the DMA to know uh, uh, to know uh, how how the data transfer to be taking place. And as I told you, it uh, in the uh, in our case it consists of the 1632 bit uh, words. So there is a proper format has been defined for the AXI DMA IP for the buffer descriptor. So you can see here that the uh, the first 232 bit word in in case of the AXI DMA. So here you can see that the first 32 uh, bit word in case of the AXI DMA corresponds to the pointer to the next uh, buffer descriptor. Then you have the address from where the data to be uh, read in case of the MM2S or data to be written in case of S2MM. Then you have the um, uh, reserved words here, and then you have the control register and the status register, and these are the application words which are available option. So basically, when you create a buffer descriptor, you need to make sure that you fill up these fields and the control and the you can read the status of the buffer descriptor via using the status register. Now let's look at the content of the control and status register. So via control and the status register, uh, you can see that here you are telling the address of the next uh, buffer descriptor and the address of the data to be read or written. But you are not taking how much data, how you are not talking about how much data to be read or written. That is there in the control register. So you can see that in the control register, you have the buffer length which will indicate how much data to be uh, uh, transferred. And here you can see that. So here you can see that the maximum is 26 bits, so 2 to the power 26. And there is a start of frame and end of frame uh, uh, bits. These are important. They should be uh, set properly in MM2S. In case of the S2MM, these are not important because they are taken from the MM2S. So you can set it to zero uh, in case of the S2MM. But in case of the MM2S, if you are using only one buffer descriptor, like in our today's lab, we will be set both of them to one. But depending if you have the multiple buffer descriptor, then you need to, suppose you have three buffer descriptor. So in case of the first one, it will be one zero, then it will be zero zero, and then it will be zero one. Okay, so you need to take care of it. And then out of this uh, one, how many data has been actually transferred? You can read it in the status register. You can, if there is any error, you can read it. And if there is a status of the uh, uh, buffer descriptor, you can read it in the uh, corresponding flag. Okay, so, so with this, we have completed the discussion on the theory of the DMASG. So for block diagram is very simple. We are going to use the uh, corresponding, uh, the uh, matrix multiplication. So we are using the uh, floating point matrix multiplication used in the uh, previous step. We are using the eight cross eight matrix multiplication. And here we are doing the pipelining in the loop two so that the loop three is unrolled. So that IP we are using, we are using the same IP twice. We are comparing the performance of the simple DMA. So you can see that this is the simple DMA. There is no HG port. And this is the uh, AXI DMA, which is a scatter gathered uh, mode of DMA. And you can see that there is a HG mode. So a uh, same IP is being used. When you configure the DMA in the scatter gathered mode, make sure that you have enabled the scatter, uh, scat you have enabled the uh, scatter gathered mode of the uh, DMA here. So, <laughs> so here this one is enabled. Uh, here the length of the buffer register, which you need to take care. Uh, this is the rest of the things are same in the AXR DMA and the AXR CZDMA. Now, in the next video, we'll quickly discuss the corresponding application code, like how to configure the DMA in the uh, SDK.